The time has arrived and I call the meeting of the Finance Committee to order for today, Monday, February 4th, 2019, 7 o'clock here at the Arnold School. Uh, Councilors, welcome. Uh, guests, welcome. I hope you all have recovered from last night with that wonderful and beautiful game of football that we watched and congratulations to our hometown team for winning another Super Bowl. Uh, I probably will be a Gillette <coughs> uh, hanging out with the with the boys down there, but uh, you get a ring too? I <laughs> doubt it. I doubt it. But what are you going to do, uh, Madam Clerk? Item one: please. appropriation of the total grant in the amount of seven thousand one hundred nine dollars and sixty nine cents from the Board of Health, Massachusetts Association of Health Boards grant to City of Brockton Board of Health. Massachusetts Association of Health Board Grant Fund invited Louis Tataglia, Jr., Executive Director, Board of Health, Karen Preval, Budget Director, Finance. Uh, Councilors, we uh, received communications from uh, uh, Mr. Tataglia saying that he is uh, unfortunately couldn't make it today. So, uh, Karen, welcome. Yes, hi, thank you. So we this is this is a grant that the um, Board of Health has been receiving for several years. There is no state match. And Second. motion was fa uh, made and properly second. All those in favor recommending favorably. So move. Uh, number two, please. Appropriation of 80000 from Stabilization Fund to Fire Department Personal Services Non Overtime. Invited William Carpenter, Honorable Mayor, Bill Hill, Union President, Local 144, Karen Preval, Budget Director, Finance. Uh, Councilors, uh, if there's no objections, I asked actually uh, uh, Chief Williams to come in and give us a quick uh, breakdown on this particular item, and as well as uh, our CFOs here. Uh, Chief, good evening, Councilors. So this appropriation is to fund a one percent raise in the firefighters' hazardous duty pay. Um, over the past year or so, we've gotten heavily involved in training um, in active shooter events. Um, we're teamed with the police department. Um, we purchased 27 kits, I'll call them, or packs. And I have one here tonight if you'd like to tell it. It's, it's an armored vest labeled with fire on the front to distinguish us from the police, de police department. Um, it's also a helmet and goggles and some also medical equipment that is, is being carried um, in the unfortunate event of an active shooter. Um, we can now enter the building when the event is still ongoing and try and save lives that way. Um, instead of waiting to the vic for the victims to be brought outside. Um, again, Deputy Chief Albanese has the kit here if you want to take a look at it. This is, we purchased 27 of these units, um, three for each piece of apparatus at this time. We uh, have just purchased a fourth for each piece of apparatus. Um, so now we're going to have actually 38 sets, uh, four for each company and one, uh, two sets for the command vehicle. Uh, Council Cruz. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, just a pretty poor statement on where our country is that our firefighters have to have helmets and these kind of helmets and these kind of vests. But uh, it's certainly great that our, our people have been trained and hopefully nothing ever is needed. But uh, I'll certainly be supporting this after a <coughs> chance to take a look at that. That's pretty scary that our firefighters have to wear that kind of equipment. Unfortunately, that's where we are today. That's where we are. So. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Council yeah. Borger. Mr. Chair. Am I to understand that all the firefighters have been trained in this capacity? Yes, they have. So that any time, th depending on the shifts, they, they could be sent out and required to do that? Correct. But in not all instances do they leave with all this apparatus? No, this, this, this equipment is carried on the apparatus at, oh. all, at all times. Okay, I'm sorry, on the ambulance? No, the apparatus. Apparatus? Okay, yes. thank you. So I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Will. I just want to clear that up. Wow. Right. Now, I read the whole thing. It's intense. <laughs> Counts. Yes. So they're basically going to go going in with police officers, in bringing team, them in. Basically, there's teams of, of two police officers and two firefighters. Yep. We'll go in as, as a four-person team mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, render aid to the, to the victims. And you got one on each truck? I have four. Oh, it's four on each four. Four right, on each right truck. Now there's three on each company. We have nine companies. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and we're adding a fourth very shortly. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Councilor Cash. Thank you. Good evening, Chief. Good evening, Thank you for Council. being here. I understand that part of the reason that your force started training for this is what happened in Florida and that um, 
some of the children who died in the shooting perhaps could have been saved, they bled out. Correct. And so I think this is a wonderful idea for you guys to have taken the initiative to be prepared. Scary world we're living in, but we must keep our, our children and our residents safe. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Derenkar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Chief, you mentioned that um, as we speak, you have 27, right? Correct. I mean, let's say that there's an emergency that sort of like require more than that. You have no manpower whatsoever to do it. Or was that 27 based on the amount of money that you received to purchase At the them? time of the pr first purchase, yeah, we purchased the 27 sets. Okay. And in, in the meantime, I purchased 11 more. Oh, we're going to purchase 11 more? Yes. So which is 27, something like that. So yeah, it's actually that's 30, 38 sets. So and that's the maximum. That's four for each company. Okay, so that's the maximum. apparatus and then two sets for the command vehicle. Interesting. So this is the maximum that you can buy at this moment? That's about all we need. Is that's that right? about all we need right now. Oh, yes. that's all you need? Right now. Okay, yes. okay. Sounds good. Thank you. You're uh, welcome. Anybody else uh, before we go back to uh, uh, Councilman Cash? Thank you. One more thing. So, but these funds are not for apparatus and, and devices. This is for personnel, Correct. right? Um, we're, we're increasing um, your hazard pay. Correct. Right. And that's for the six months that end on June 30th. It began on January 1st. Okay, and you're going to be in the process of renegotiating your contract. And so this will be included, yes. right? And this will... Sure. Oh, thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Uh, Condon. Good evening. This, good. Is, this is a permanent addition to the contract. Right. This is a, executed by side letter. Right. Uh, we are going to the table. Uh, their contract expires on June 30. We're going to the table to negotiate a new contract. But this is a permanent addition, and, issue, and you're correct. It's for six months. It's a 1% increase to their hazardous duty pay for the remaining six months. It'll be more than that when we get to the new fiscal year. And probably at the end of negotiations, it will be a little more. No, I think we're, uh, we're frozen on this in the next set of negotiations. I think we agreed in the negotiations that they wouldn't be coming back on this item for more okay. money. They're not precluded on any other item. But and on that's this one. the purpose of the side letter? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Sullivan, please. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, wanna, I mean, the way I look at it, it's 80 grand, it's 1%, it's a hazard of pay. I mean, these, these men and women have probably one of the most hazardous jobs in the, in the nation. They run into ho houses and buildings on fire, and now it's escalated where they could run in and someone could be shooting at them. So, um, you know, we've always articulated, at least I have, is that you don't put a price tag on health and safety. Um, from a negotiation standpoint, I mean, they, they bargained in good faith. There was a meeting of the mind. So, I'm going to make a favor recommendation back to the full council. So, uh, motion has been properly made and properly seconded. On the motion. motion, Mr. Chairman. Chief, in reference to what you said earlier, uh, given the fact that you said as of right now we have 27, so I see you guys wearing those big stuff. How are they going to wear it? They're going to wear it underneath of it underneath or on top of it? Gear, yes. So my question is that they will wear this based on on an emergency, or are they going to have well, to wear it all the time? No, no, no. An active shooter event. Okay. When they respond to the event, as they when they get off the apparatus, they'll, they'll don their ballistic protection yeah. and the fire coat. If, depending on weather and temperature, the fire coat can go over it. I mean, I know you said that. Well, obviously, the, the, um, the thing said fire on it. Right. So when you guys put that big jacket on, it's not going to block it? Uh, I believe it probably will, but you'd have to leave your jacket open. so that. Okay, so that will be sort of like your recommendation for them to leave it open. Correct. Is that not dangerous for them? And it would be if it was a fire situation. I don't know. I mean, I don't really not, know not anything about the jacket at all. I'm just asking based right. on what you just said. The, the bunker gear that we wear is, is designed for fire protection. Okay. So, so, so it, in an active shooter situation, it probably wouldn't matter that the coat okay. is unbuttoned. Sounds good. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Uh, any, anything else? Uh, the motion has been properly made and properly seconded. All those in favor of recommending favorably? Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Number three, Madam Clerk. Ordered that the sum of seven million eight hundred thousand is appropriated to pay costs of making improvements to the city's wastewater treatment facilities, including the payment of all planning and engineering costs and all other costs incidental and related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with approval of the mayor, is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to MGL Chapter 44 and or MGL Chapter 29C, or pursuant to any other enabling authority and to issue bonds or notes of the city therefore that such bonds or notes shall be general obligations of the city unless the treasurer with the approval of the mayor determines that <clears throat> they should be issued as limited obligations and may and may be secured by local system 
revenues as defined in MGL Chapter 29C, Section 1, that the Treasurer, with approval of the Mayor, is authorized to borrow all or a portion of such amount from the Massachusetts Clean Water Trust, the trust established pursuant to MGL Chapter 29C, and in connection therewith to enter into a financing agreement and or a security agreement with the trust and otherwise to contract with the Trust and the Department of Environmental Protection, DEP, with respect to such loan and for any <clears throat> federal or state aid available for the project or for the financing thereof, and that the Mayor is authorized to enter into a project regulatory agreement with DEP to expend all funds available for the project and to make any other action necessary to carry out the project. Further ordered, any premium received by the city upon the sale of any bonds or notes approved by this order, less any premium applied to the payment of the costs of issuance of such bonds or notes, may be applied to the payment of costs approved by this order in accordance with MGL Chapter 20 of the General Laws, thereby reducing the amount authorized to be borrowed to pay such costs by like amount. Further ordered that the City Treasurer is authorized to file an application with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Municipal Finance Oversight Board to qualify under MGL Chapter 44A of the General Laws and all bonds or notes of the City authorized by this vote and to provide such information and execute such documents as the Municipal Finance Oversight Board of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts may require. Each order must be published at least 10 days prior to final passage and requires at least a two-thirds vote of all members of the Council. For each order, a certificate from you as the Chief Financial Officer is required by Section 5 of Chapter, two, so chapter 324 of Acts of 1990 and should be filled prior to adoption of the loan order. If you do not give the required cert cert <coughs> certificate or if you are unable to make the certification without expressing qualifications or contingencies, the loan order may only be passed by the City Council if the absence of such certification or qualified or contingent nature of such certification is expressly noted in such order. If any funds are to be advanced for these purposes and reimbursed from the bond proceeds, please note the requirements of MGL Chapter 44 SS 20A and the guidelines issued by the Director of Bureau of Accounts. Invited Lawrence Rowley, Commissioner, DPW, David Norton, Contract Administrator, Water Sewer, Karen Preval, Budget Director. Uh, Mr. Condon. Uh, Councilors, this is a complicated order. I know for some of you this may be the first time you've, you've seen one of these loan orders, so I'll take a couple of seconds and try to explain. This is a formula uh, pattern that's in here, and I'll try to explain it. Basically, there's a $7.8 million borrowing being requested uh, in order to spend money to bring uh, the uh, wastewater treatment plant, spent, invest there a little bit, so that we can comply with the new uh, uh, discharge permit that was issued a couple of years ago. We need to be in compliance by 2021, I think, or 2022. So anyway, that's what this money is going towards. Um, the structure of the order at first says $7.8 million, which is the amount that we're borrowing. It st states the purpose, and then it says that we're allowed to borrow this money under two different authorities. One is a general authority, which is Chapter 44, and the second is Chapter 29C. Uh, if we borrow under 29C, and I believe that we will, that allows us to approach the uh, state revolving fund for water pollution projects and get an interest rate subsidy. So that's what that section applies to. I think we're already on their pre-approved list for this. So they're, they're expecting this to come through. So we'll get an interest rate subsidy. As you move ahead in this, um, it basically if we borrow in under Chapter 40, 44, the general borrowing authority, we could either, either issue these notes as general obligation bonds, which we normally do because we get a better interest rate in doing that, or as revenue bonds, which are secured by the revenues of the sewer fund. We budget as if these are revenue bonds and expect the sewer fund to pay for them, but they're almost always general obligation bonds in order that we get a better interest rate. So that's what that's all about. Uh, the trust is the 29C, the Clean Water Trust for borrowing under that section. Uh, if you borrow from that trust, you're oblig obligated to enter into a financing agreement with the trust in accordance with the requirements of the trust attorneys. And in the middle of this order, we're talking about that. We have to enter into this uh, regulatory agreement and enforcement agreement with the trust in order to get the benefit of that loan. 
then we go into the further ordered piece basically here what we're talking about if we sold these bonds competitively in the municipal bond market sometimes in order to win a bid a financing company will provide more than the amount that you asked for so you borrow a million dollars for the project say it's at a stated five percent and they maybe give you a million one hundred thousand dollars which effectively reduces your rate that's in order to have a certain amount of revenue coming into them over the life of the bond, but to be competitive at the time they're trying to secure the business. And we're restricted in what we do with that premium. We can pay issuance costs with it, and if we have any money left after we pay the issuance cost, we have to use that premium to reduce the amount borrowed. So that's what that language is talking about. Uh, the final piece is if we don't go through the trust, another way we can get a lower interest rate is there's an act in Massachusetts which the city has availed itself of in the past called the Qualified Bond Act. In that case, uh, your bond payments are actually made by the state. They intercept a portion of your state revenues and direct those revenues out to the uh, bond holders. Uh, that gets you a favorable interest rate as well. Uh, we used to use that more often when our interest uh, you know, bond rating wasn't as high. And even now we can get a better rate because the state's a little bit higher rated than we are, so occasionally we do use this, and if we chose to, if the environment was right, that gives us the authority to do it. And the final piece has to do with this famous Chapter 324 of Act of 1990 certification. On this particular one, the sewer fund's in pretty decent shape, but we have not raised the rates there since I think 2009 or 2010. And the contract that uh, we're under with Veolia for the 20-year uh, wastewater treatment plant uh, the contract operations expires, and that has to be replaced in 2020. I think it after 2020, it expires in 2020. So we don't know the cost of that replacement yet. We can either execute with the present vendor, it's, there's an extension provided for in the original contract, or we can go out to bid. Plus we know that for this, it's gonna be about a $400,000 increase in the sewer debt cost. So I've indicated we haven't raised the rates for a while. Sometime during 2020, before we issue these debts, I'm recommending a simple 5% rate increase in order to get us so that we're, we know we're healthy and can stay compliant in the sewer fund. It's not an awful lot of increase to the, to the ratepayers for sewer who haven't paid one since 2010. And that's what the, the order says. Um, the specifics on the project are probably better addressed by, uh, by Larry or Dave, but the $7.8 million, I think they sent a fact sheet around. If they don't, uh, we'll take questions off that. And I think it's pretty clear that we, um, I'm actually a little bit surprised that for $7.8 million we can come into compliance with this permit because in the past new permits have usually required a lot more investment <coughs> of the city than $7.8 million, which says that we've done a decent job negotiating on those permit limits and also the investment we made uh, 15, 10, 15 years ago when we upgraded that plant is still paying dividends. So I'll take questions on the money and they'll take questions on the project. Uh, Councilors, uh, I believe <coughs> Council Farwell you're up, sir. Okay, just a few questions on the money, Mr. Condon. I, I, given the nature of your certification that you really believe that the wastewater uh, sewer rate should be raised, would it not be more prudent to have the rate structure addressed and then approve the loan order? It just seems to me we're, we're putting one before the other and there's no guarantee that we will, in fact, raise the sewer rates. There isn't. And, uh, can the sewer enterprise account handle the 400000 if nothing happens? Um, if, the rates are, if, re, if the rates remain unchanged, can that enterprise account handle 400000 uh, I think over the life of the bonds it cannot um, because it's probably a 20 or 30, 20 or 30 year borrow. In the early years you probably can. Uh, so I felt obliged to provide that conditional certification. You can sell the bonds if you decide not to raise the rates. The condition is on the, on the face of the bond. If you do sell the bonds without a rate increase because you've got a conditional uh, certification, these are special kinds of bonds. They're, they're, in Massachusetts, you've got restrictions on the amount of debt you can limit, you can issue, and there are restrictions for inside the debt limit and outside the debt limit, where for this kind of a bond, you can go outside the debt limit with, with a conditional certification not satisf satisfied. You'd have to come inside the debt limit. I don't see a, that has nothing to do with the, tax limit, it's just a calculation against your 
assess values for debt issuance purposes. Uh, we're under the debt limit on both kinds, so I don't see a huge impact on doing that, but that would be a technical restriction if we didn't pass the, pass the rate increase. So I, thought, I think it's probably a good idea to do it. The reason I put it in now is because of the back-end obligation we have to complete the project in order to uh, <coughs> be compliant with that new permit. And there is a date, and I forget the date, whether it's 21 or 21 or 20. April 2022. Yeah. So, you know, you want to get going on this is the reason I put the conditions of conditions. I, I would like to thank Commissioner Rowley for sending out very clear and concise documentation on this particular uh, matter. And much appreciated, saves a lot of time. Um, so, you recommend the loan order, notwithstanding the fact that we haven't addressed sewer rates yet? That's right, because I think. My certification says to do it in, in fiscal 2020. You could decide to do it mid-year, I mean a year from now. And, you know, that postpones the impact on the rate payer. And I'm not troubled by that because I still think if you take some kind of action like that, you're going to be okay on the, rate, on the revenue structure. And we'll be able to get going on this project and not run into trouble with the DEP on the, or the EPA on that front. All right. My next question is uh, the, the inflow comes into the system from all sources. It's discharged. We've got the discharge permit. We've got to comply with new regulations. Whitman, Abington, and Stonehill discharge into the system. So we're, it would appear, just reading this, that we're taking the brunt of borrowing and making the upgrades. Do they kick in anything? Yes. Uh, first of all, they're obliged uh, to comply with the permit and what they send into our system. Um, in terms of our own regulations. Uh, second, uh, they're charged on the basis of our cost as they are incurred each year, proportioned out to them on the percentage of flow that their flow into the plant represents. So if we raise our, our cost by a million dollars to take care, and then it won't be, but this is about 400,000, but they would pick up their proportionate share of the 400,000. So they're, they're not escaping anything. So we, we'd make the initial borrowing, yes. but eventually they would we would catch up with them and they would pay their exactly. proportional share. And, and it happens as each budget occurs, so it's not as if they get a two or three year benefit. So if we're borrowing just on an interim basis and only paying interest, that'll show up in the budget, it'll get audited, and then we say, here's your bill, and you know, it's, it's a $20,000 charge to you equipment as a result of this because you got a 5% piece of the, of the treatment plan. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councilors, anything else? Anybody else? I'm wondering about the incinerator. I know we're not incinerating anymore. Is, uh, is, will part of the improvements be taking the incinerator apart? That's not in this project. I think that's a, uh, that's a project that should be brought to the City Council for funding at some point, uh, but it's not in this project. It'll be okay. part of the budget maybe in this year or another fiscal year. Okay. But otherwise, I think you have, you have even mothballed it or is it just sitting there? It's technically mothballed. It's technically mothballed. Yeah. mothballed. Okay. Okay. And we're still trucking the sludge yes. out seven days a week, six days a week? Six. six. We try six. Sometimes we have to go seven. Just based off the truck. Well, somebody okay. come up here and speak yeah. into the mic. Actually, David, if you could come up and just kind of say that so that the folks at home can uh, hear this so they don't think we're just talking to ourselves. For the most part, we're at six days a week. Sometimes we do need a seventh day just to kind of catch up on a few things if truckers had issues during the week because we do have a certain amount of sludge we need to get out of the plant, so. Okay. And how are we, how are we paying that expense that's just coming it's, from the sewer it, it, it's rate in, money? It's in the sewer budget. Okay. It's in a line item. I forget mm -hmm. the number, but it's called incinerated trans. You'll see incin trans at, okay. at 1.7. And how long is that contract for? It's uh, probably two more years here because we started January 13th of last year, so we have two more years to go. Okay. Um, so that will come due the year before all this work has to be completed. Probably that, and there'll be other decisions to make, as the CFO mentioned, uh, the contract operator, currently Veolia, their Veolia. contract's up, so there's different ways we can kind of mesh in the sludge disposal, so we can, we'll be having those discussions whether we stay like we're doing it with bids, or maybe we'll put it on, if we go out to bid, we'll put it in the RFP, possibly. Okay. <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Councillor uh, Councilor Sullivan. Mr. Norton, I just had a follow-up quick question on that. Sure. So six or seven days, uh, there must be 
some days where they they can't truck at all, right? Weather or well, delay. sometimes. So do you have a, like do you guys store it there? Yeah, well, we actually built a little container shit, like uh, like what do you call it? shelter? Yep. In case like if it's really raining and stuff, we really rather not ship it because it, it will gain uh, moisture, which is weight. So we try to keep it dry. Mm -hmm. So we very rarely have trucks on site though. They're, we pretty much want them out. So, but we do have a shelter, special shelter we can put it in. Okay. All a right. trailer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Uh, hold on. Uh, on the motion, I believe uh, Councillor Fowell had something else. Just one more to Commissioner Rowley <coughs> on CDM. Uh, I, I noticed that apparently they put this proposal together for us. Am I correct? Yes, Councillor. I'm a bit intrigued by their financial relationship with us. They, they design the project, but then don't we pay them to monitor it and make sure it's done? We do. I mean, it, it just we, strikes we me as odd that, you know, if I hire a home inspector and I tell them, by the way, everything you find wrong, I'm going to pay you to fix. I, I'm wondering if there's that degree of objectivity there that, that gets us we, what we want. Well, with all the upgrading we did to the sewer plant, we went through the same process and we didn't, we didn't have any problems with uh, their uh, REs overlooking their work. Because don't forget, Dave's right on it and I'm right on it. So if we don't like something that we see, we let them know. No, I, I'm, I'm sure in terms of carrying out the project, but, but you're, in, you're in effect, you're putting the very person who's going to profit from the complexity or the scope of the project in charge of designing the project. And I, I, I'm just wondering why we don't have an independent engineering firm come in and say, this is what you need, but then you'd have someone else oversee it. I mean, I mean we, we could do that, but where they design it, they're familiar with it, the REs, um, if we brought another company in, they'd have to familiarize themselves with this plan. Yeah. Um, I believe we've done this before, though. We brought other phase two of the upgrade of the sewer plant. I mean, CDM Smith did design it, but we brought in a different engineering firm to oversee their work. I mean, you can see why it, it, yes. it's a little I, odd yep. that uh, you design yep. it, and by the way, we'll pay you to carry out the design. Uh, yep. more cost All right, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Anything else on the motion? Well, the uh, motion has to recommend item three favorably to the full city council has been properly made and properly second. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Councillor, is anything? Councillor Cruz. Thank you. I'm actually going to step to the podium for a minute. Oh. Jay. True report. Did you tell me before you think this is the last meeting you'll be at? Can you come up for a minute? I didn't prepare any I didn't prepare anything tonight for you. But I don't think the public will ever understand what this man's done for the city of Brockton over the last how many years? Twenty eight and count. Twenty eight years. He started when he was twelve. <laughs> what what this city has gone through back when the Mass General Laws when Council Farwell came in as Mayor Farwell he can attest even better than I. This city was in such terrible financial condition that the state said, you're going to hire somebody like Jay Conan. They didn't know we were going to get somebody like Jay Conan. If the public ever knew, Jay's a graduate of Wharton Business School. Most of the people he went to school with are probably the people right now, most of them probably went to jail for, uh, for certain things that they did. But uh, they're all in the 1% those people that he went to school with. This is one of the most brilliant men that's ever been around this state. And I can tell you that for my 14 years and other years being involved with other things, there is nobody, I can't tell you how difficult and how scared I am of the next 28 years for this city because nobody can do what Jay has done for this city. I just want to thank you personally. I don't, I don't know if to give a speech. I don't know what to say about that. Thank you very much. It means a lot to me. Um, there have been a lot of people who I've worked with over those 28 years, and almost without exception, they've all been dedicated public servants. You know, there's sometimes disagreements on policy, but it's almost always honest disagreement on policy. And uh, places like Brockton don't survive without people who are willing to give their time, whether they're paid as employees full-time or part-time or just volunteers. Uh, it, it's 
folks who are involved in public life that way that make things happen. And if they step aside and we don't get good volunteers and good people to replace them, that's when you get in trouble. So, so thank you very much. I appreciate that really, really very much. Thank you, Councilman. And from what I understand, I don't think Jay's going too far. He's only in Bridgewater, so he's going to be, you're going to be around helping us. That's what I hear. So you're not going too, you're not going too far. Uh, Council, any, uh, Council Sullivan, you wanted to? Chairman, if I could, um, I wanted to kind of uh, react a little bit to uh, a newspaper article and some quotes that were directed by the mayor of the city of Brockton to the city council, specifically to the marijuana ordinance. As you may recall, last week I, I mentioned that Mr. May, as the city planner, had articulated and promised to us, the five members on the board, uh, that they would be having a planning board meeting in January. For whatever reason, it didn't happen. It's scheduled for this month. Uh, that's the fact. Mayor Carpenter, in his wisdom, decided to articulate in the Brockton Enterprise that the city council and me as the chairman violated the law, said that we violated the open meeting law. First of all, it's unconscionable that a sitting mayor would say that city employees violated the law. It just makes no sense. But let me just be clear. He is inaccurate. He's erroneous. His facts are not truthful. Um, the city council's attorney, Attorney Resnick, is drafting a letter of response. It's going to be read into the minutes. Um, the article, and again, the Enterprise articles aren't always accurate, but I will say this. There's three points in that article that are wrong and just not truthful. Number one, we never violated the open meeting law. December 27th, it was a late file. There was no violation of the law. Number two, saying that, and the city solicitor pined on it as well, saying that what the five members of the ordinance committee, myself and you, Mr. President, Mr. Monaghan, Mr. Fowler, and Mr. Cruz, saying what we did would not need to go back to the planning board in the city of Brockton is just not right. Chapter 48, Master of Law, is clear. Uh, it needs to, and that's the process and mechanism in place. So again, the mayor is wrong on that. Um, and the biggest thing that I think he uh, either doesn't know or doesn't care about or is blind to the fact that um, there was a, a quote saying we dragged our feet for four months. Well, that's not right because the mayor may not know this, but it was Mr. Monaghan's ordinance that was submitted that he's talking about four months. Well, that ordinance didn't go anywhere. The ordinance that we acted on was an ordinance that Moses Rodriguez and I filed. So there was no four-month delay. So I just wanted to make it clear tonight. I know we're in a subcommittee, um, but I, I take great offense to the fact that um, they said that the 11 members of the city council violated the law. As a lawyer, I'm offended by that, but as a taxpayer in the city of Brockton, I just, I'm stupefied to the fact that the mayor, who was elected by the general body, would say that. So I just want to make it clear, rest assured, everything was done appropriately, maybe not to the speed that some people wanted, but I don't really care about that. It was done properly and appropriately. And the, uh, the attorney for the city council will draft a letter that will be read into the record next week. I just wanted to tell you that. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you. And I mean, that means a lot to a lot of us because, uh, as you know, a lot of us, uh, we put in a great deal of time and effort to, uh, to see to it that that ordinance comes out in the proper way. And it's something that the city should be proud of because we worked very hard on that, on that ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if I might, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just uh, I want to remind the members of the safety subcommittee that there will be a meeting on February the 13th at 5.30 p.m. It will be held at the basement of the City Hall again. It's February 13th, 5.30 p.m. I think you should have received some information. Um, and and uh, again, it will be at the uh, basement in City Hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Councillor from Ward, 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 Ward 3. Yes. Yes, you're still there. I'm still there. <laughs> Council Denver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, um, I would like to say something to Jay. Um, Jay, um, obviously, um, you know, I've known you for the past, what, four years now? Uh, probably no, 2012, uh, six years now when I was interned from Inda Balzori. And um, obviously, you have been nothing but great to the city, so I could not be more, you know, more proud than having someone like yourself. Unfortunately, when you started this job, I probably was born because I'm 28, so it's been 28 since. Uh, you've been doing this job since you've been you've been you've been doing this job. But like 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 like, like my colleague um, Tim Cruz just said, I don't think anybody truly understands the complexity of what you do. And obviously, uh, you put not only your time into this, but also your heart. So I would like to publicly thank you uh, for everything that you've been doing for this city. And I know that although you are not here, but if we need you, um, we will be able to find you. So I hope you don't give up on us because. 
Josephine Kolewe. I like that. So we are desperately need someone like you in the city. And as you know, the way I stand is that I will do anything that I could possibly do, not just to acknowledge your greatness, but the greatness of anybody who served the city. So I would like to thank you um, for your service and, of course, your um, unwavering support to all of us in Brockton. And, um, and I hope for another 28 years from now. Thank you. <laughs> so, so from in another 28 years, you're not going to say you're only 28, right? <laughs> well, obviously <laughs> not. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I do want to take just a couple of quick seconds in, uh, in regards to uh, Mr. Condon and his many years here in the city, and uh, I know his a, a departure of uh, within the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I had the great pleasure, okay, it does talk about my school committee years, but I did have the great pleasure. Never heard of that before. I, never heard of that. I had a great pleasure of working with Mr. Condon uh, at that particular time back in the mid-90s when uh, then Mayor Units wanted to make sure that Mr. Condon, our financial officer, was a part of the negotiations throughout the school department, which I thought was the, you know, the best thing to do with all the types of unions that the school department has, especially with the teachers' union. And Jay and I know how many times we used to sit there. It wasn't midnight or 1 o'clock. Sometimes it was 2 o'clock. And with the teachers still peeking outside the windows at the central administration building, looking in to see what we were doing. So, um, right? And we both looked at each other and almost said, what are we doing? Well, we didn't know, but we were doing it, right? And doing it in the best interest of the, of, of the city. Um, and, and just in the last... Just in the last few weeks, I had the opportunity of sitting in um, when the interviews were being held in regards to uh, the next CFO, a person that will be um, you know, receiving the position at some point, and the mayor will be making an announcement, I think, at some, some time. But um, as I said then uh, to the committee that was there, I says, keep in mind, you're, you're just filling a position because if you're looking to fill the shoes that Mr. Condon wore, it's not going to happen. I don't foresee anybody ever sitting in, in that position for uh, 18, 20 years, nor do you ever see a superintendent of schools sit as long as a Matt George did for 12 years. Um, they all come in and they've done their math and they all look and say, well, if I do four more, at least my retirement's up high and I can go out the door. And that's what you have today. And I have to say, even with some candidates we even had before us, it was, um, it was a job looking opportunity and, and just felt that they could you know, do that job, but um, that's, that's not the case. But I'm sure the next person that will, will come in will spend half the time or, or most of the quarter of the time of what Mr. Condon did, and, and um, they'll also realize um, one of the things I did uh, dictate to them is they have to also keep in mind that they don't just work with the mayor, they have a city council they have to work with too. And uh, that, that person has to have the, uh, the bone and the caliber to be able to stand before the city council and, and take a little bit of, of heat and even take it from public. And I've always commended you on that because you took a lot of grief, a lot of grief that you should have never gotten many, many years ago from certain people in this city. And those people should be ashamed <coughs> of themselves. But they've already, you know, left Brockton in themselves anyway, so, but that's okay, but still. Um, you, you did an omen's job in saying, this is my job, this is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to continue to do it whether you like it or not. So uh, in any case, um, I thank you, Mr. Condon, for, uh, for those many, 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 many years to the city because uh, you did a fine, outstanding job. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Uh, anyone else? We're going to end this night on a light note, and we're going to tell a true story. Oh boy. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Condon, Mr. Martelli and I were down in New York for a bond rating trip. And we went to eat at a very fancy restaurant in Little Italy. And I'm sitting there in my glass of wine, I think I had veal palm or something, and for some reason I looked up and it had a glass ceiling. And stretched between the two buildings was a clothesline with someone's underwear hanging on it. <laughs> so we're eating one of these lavish Italian meals at this upscale Italian restaurant, and all of us are looking up. And I think we were quite surprised that this was the ambiance that was provided. So, yeah. So needless to say, we beat up in Mr. Martelli pretty heavily that night. But, I, we, but I guess the moral of the story is. And, you know, in government, there's a lot of serious moments, but there's a lot of fun, and, and you, you've got to roll with the punches. And uh, uh, Jay, uh, forgetting the fact that you were the CFO, you're just one hell of a person. So. I got one story about the mayor. 
Let's go. 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 let us go let us uh, Italian part Swedish, but he was interested in the restoration of the Statue of Liberty. And uh, his family had bought a brick or several bricks uh, for the Martelli name. And he said, we had a few minutes between uh, my one bond presentation with one agency was one day and one the next. We had a few minutes. He said, Mayor, I'm going to go out to Ellis Island to look for my brick. Do you want to come? He said, no, Jim, my family came on an earlier boat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the Mayflower. The Mayflower <laughs> and his face just fell. So. <laughs> uh, that's good. True story. My <laughs> <laughs> well, I just wanted to, I just want to thank the ladies from the uh, the auditor and the uh, and, and Aaron for your help with this uh, and all the counselors here. And if we have any, what? Well, I would like to say something to Council Faro. If I could, well, given your ability to tell stories, I feel like oh we should choose you as the comedian of the council. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Well, I think Mr. Monahan believes that that's my role. Yeah. I'm not sure. Right? <laughs> Having no more business of the people of the city, I adjourn the meeting for today.